Uh, something to kind of segue into a leadership position. Okay. Anything to kind of maybe branch out and acquire new skills would be fantastic. Sure. And have you had any leadership roles, whether um, professionally or in uh, studies? Uh, well, let's see. Uh, as far as professionally, I've been kind of a one-man band. Okay. And then in, in college? Uh, in college, I was in the school newspaper, so I had an experience working under teams and organizational leadership and things of that nature. Okay. Cool. Uh, so trying to sustainable marketing career, fantastic. And um, are you uh, actually studying your master's or are you going to do that in the future? Uh, my idea is to get to I'm 35, so I'm still kind of weighing my options about exactly sure. which path I want to go. Okay. And what would you like to study? Uh, right now I'm either looking at something either in a creative nonfiction or organizational leadership. Okay. Cool. And um, you can see yourself in a leadership role in the future? No, without question. Perfect. And what made you apply for us? Worldwide, did some research, and you have a pretty good combination of uh, retail and nonprofit. Sure. And that certainly kind of intrigued me working out those two very different fields. Awesome. Well, let me tell you a little bit more about us. We are a outsourced sales and marketing company. We actually take over and run marketing campaigns for our clients, typically the fastest growing industries, so telecoms, entertainment media, health and beauty, not my specialty, banking and charities. We work with the likes of Atlanta Braves, Sprint and Virgin Mobile, Xfinity, the World Wildlife Fund, and the reason being is, well, their clients are so large, they spend a fortune on TV, radio, billboard, social media, which is all great, getting the name out there, causing exposure. However, it gives them very little in return. So they need the customer service, which is us, Speaking to customers, building relationships, great sales presentations. So we manage all their promotional events within the Atlanta area. So what do they get from us? Well, they get a constant influx of new customers, plus the most cost-effective way of raising brand awareness. What do they need from us? Well, they want us to grow. They want us to grow into new markets, new areas, and, and in order to do so, we need more people. However, we need the right personnel. We need people to teach, train, develop others, to plan, manage, organize our events, to liaise with clients, to recruit. We're looking for experts. Now, we've always found that instead of looking for these experts, let's train them. So we have a business development program specifically designed to train our managers. Our candidates start off work with our events and promotion team, customer service, basic sales, represent our client, a lot of fun, a lot of teamwork. We're going to progress people quickly into a leadership role. So they're teach, train, develop others. Then they're going to plan, manage, organize our events. And then they start to learn the back end of the office. Admin, recruitment, finance, legal aspects, marketing strategies, client meetings. So we do have a manager that can oversee an office and run a campaign. We're looking to develop people fairly quickly within the first six to ten months. So, could you see yourself completing a training program like that? Uh, that really depends. Six to ten months, is it all comped? Of course, of course. Okay, and what about being a paid, actually getting out in the field during that time? Sure. So, in terms of our, our uh, pay structure, it is uh, basic plus a commission pay as well. Mm -hmm. And as a candidate progresses, well, the rewards get greater. Obviously, it's this continuous training. But we are looking to develop people, I'd say, people fairly quickly. So, there is a, it's a self development program. Mm -hmm. Well, James, I'm not going to make a decision right now. Obviously, I've got another 60 CVs to go through. So, we're going to call back successful candidates later on today. Uh, we're actually moving building and also about to start a new client. So if we haven't called at the end of the day, it's not what we're looking for just now. But we do potentially have office-based roles available, which would be like recruitment, administration, that kind of thing. Um, we've, we're moving building within the next two weeks, starting new clients. We're going to work out kind of budgets from there. So we do keep everyone's CV on file. And I'm 
very interested in the pay structure. So it's basic plus commission. Yes. How much of the salary is tied in the commission? Um, well, it depends on the actual uh, client. So, for example, we work with um, we work with the Wild Wildlife Fund or the Nature Conservancy. They are obviously charities. So the candidate will get thirty five dollars per day basic, and then depend on how much customers they sign up. There's different tiers in terms of different donations. So thirty five is your flat rate. For yeah, that. that's extremely low from my experience. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as additional pay, is it all based on experience? I mean, how long would you be stuck at thirty five a day? So it, it depends. So for example, I went from the first stage to the second stage within six days. I went mm -hmm. from the first stage to the third stage within within seventeen weeks. It's impossible mm -hmm. to say. But that's why we get people entered in to go from there. But I'd say that obviously the, the commission on top of that, some people might earn a hundred bucks or some people might earn two hundred bucks per day. And that is still an incredibly steep uh, pay deduction for me, uh, considering my experiences. Uh, Okay, sure. When, when I look at this, I'm kind of hesitant. I, I, we all heard bad things about the rent market and the kind of stable market. So what mechanisms do you have in place to ensure that if you're going to be working for the company, you're going to have steady, sustainable pay that's not oh, sub, you know, minimum Well, I mean, at the end of the day, our clients pay us for the customers we deliver, so that's why it's performance-based. But all of our clients are such well-known brands that people want them anyway. So the product sells itself. So in actual fact, the only reason why people wouldn't make any money is if they don't work. Mm -hmm. But obviously office-based roles would be, there wouldn't be, there'd be a higher rate of base because it's, it's a job role, not a training or a sales role. So that would be recruitment or administration, and that would be an hourly salary, or well, that'd be hourly pay or a salary, plus the bonuses on top. So it'd be like the reverse. And how are your employees categorized tax wise? So they consider independent contractors? No, the W four. And obviously they dictate their allowances. And as far as exactly the organizational structure, okay, so we're doing outsourcing, we're not working directly with a representative for company, we're just taking marching orders from whoever our client is. Is that why? Well they no, they give us quite a lot of freedom. So we, we can, so for example, with the events and stuff, they give us an area and then we're quite flexible in terms of what we actually do in terms of our events. So we, we have full control of the running. Obviously they, they have compliance and they, they have audits and everything like that, but we, we do have a flexibility. Because we not only have this office here, obviously we're all, it's all over the US, so we have a system and structure in place that ensures our growth. It's like going to McDonald's. You know you're going to get the same cheeseburger anywhere in the world. And is there a reason as to why the turnover in the company is so high? Um, I would say it's extremely high. I've worked in the bar trade, and, uh, and that's definitely higher. Um, so I wouldn't say it's extremely high. But again, people come for different things. So say, for example, Students, students want to learn. They're not necessarily have that mentality. They're going to run a business. They're going back to school. They come and work with us internship for the summer, gain some transferable skills, and then they go off to complete their studies. Um, I wouldn't say we lose a lot of people um, through that, I and mean, we're just trying to open up another office and another client as well. It is definitely an added to the tension. And as far as benefits, what do you offer? Um, within the first ninety days, obviously nothing. And then there would be basic benefits after that. Um, but typically, uh, I'm not from the US, so as you can tell, but typically people do um, sort of their own. But we do offer the basics after the 90 days. So you offer health, the 401k? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, and what would be the bulk of my duties under this company? But the bulk of what? Sorry? My duties, what would I be doing on a so basic? So if you're successful in terms of our management training program, that'd be working on our events. So our typical day structure is 10 to 11 training. So learning systems, product knowledge, and then 11 to 7 we do our actual events. And then from 7 to, well, whenever some people get back to the office, then we review the date. 
that be the management training program in terms of an office-based role that can be anything from recruitment to processing applicants to interviewing to re relating to job boards so discussing ads reviewing a lot more I guess IT work looking at trends looking at patterns reviewing how successful jobs are job ads are that kind of thing and how long is the training to office usually as far as the timeline uh, six to ten months six to ten months yeah let us say candidates and self-development things might do it quicker than might do it longer now here's what concerns me okay mm -hmm. if we're doing six to ten months of basically just training that means we're not actually doing any official services for the company we're providing for correct well, I say training, but that's kind of still batch, still uh, doing everything. It's just continuous training. So it's not like you're just hanging back and in the background, you're in the back getting involved. It's just but my, my job is to train managers. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to continuously train and develop them. So you're going to be stuck at the 35 daily base pay for six to 10 months, more or less? Mm, well, yes, you can look at it that way, but you get unlimited earnings. That's, that's sub minimum wage. But you got the commission on top of that. Is there a guarantee running a commission? Of course. Okay, and how much? Would that be about minimum wage? Well, I couldn't say because if basically. If so you have no mechanism in place to guarantee this commission on top of the sub minimum wage pay? Well, the person wouldn't be going out on their own, they're going to be with the team, with a team leader. Is obviously experience, so mm -hmm. so they wouldn't if they don't do anything, they don't work. You get my trick? So, for example, if you ran the company and you had our clients pay us for the customers who deliver them, would you pay someone if they hadn't delivered any customers? The, 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 the whole mechanism is continuous training to allow people the skill set to then go and obviously gain. Now, is, is your training accredited by any institutions or is it just something completely in-house? Uh, in-house. In-house, so there's no sort of certification to it whatsoever? No, we don't have a tie-in with a university or a, an association. So there's no formal standards for what the training consists of? No. Okay, so how do we know we're actually getting something worthwhile and not just a bunch of bullshit? <laughs> well, obviously, it's for that candidate to obviously go for afterwards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I don't understand your question because obviously, people want to do it, do it. If not, then not a problem. Here's the thing this is an incredibly, incredibly risky prospect to me being tied away six to ten months, only making $35 a day. With you pretty much said there's no guarantee you're actually getting a decent, sustainable commission. So, I guess the only question I have now is. Is this a scam? Well, if we wouldn't be working with the clients that we work with, if it was, like we've worked with Xfinity, we worked with the World Wildlife Fund, we worked with Sprint Virgin Mobile. If we were tied into something, then why would big clients work with us? We well, understand it's not for everyone. We appreciate that. We appreciate your your feedback. At the end of the day, you know, we continue to grow. So why would we grow? Why would our clients work with us if we were? If we were a scam? Well, I mean, because I save money by hiring people to pay you thirty-five dollars a day. I think I think you're looking you're at cut. no. That's why you're doing it. I mean, it's, this is basically wage exploitation. How do you mean? Because you're only paying people thirty-five dollars a day. You have absolutely no guaranteed mechanism for base pay. You're exploiting people. No. That's what you're doing. No. So why, if I was exploiting people, I wouldn't tell people. It's their choice. It's not like we're forcing people to come in and work with us. Does well, that make sense? Well, yeah, that's called slavery if you're doing that. Of course, you have an option to leave. This, I'm sorry, this is just a substandard offer. I do not trust your organization. There's red flags all over the place. I won't know part of this. That's not a problem. I appreciate it. I'm not shaking your hand. Okay, cool. Well, that'd be great.